I want to talk for a few minutes on this particular subject. Giving in or giving up is not an option for me. We'll say again, giving in or giving up is not an option for me. Father, may you bless this word. Speak that which become it sound doctrine into the ears of your people. Father, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear, O oh God, what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Father God, in those that we hear, I pronounce the blessing upon their lives as it was pronounced upon me, that they will be able to bring forth fruit, yielding 30, 60, 100 fold. Now, God, touch the lips of clay of mine. God, that I may speak what you have given to me. In Jesus' name, amen. My prayer tonight is those of us who heard the message of our leader for 2019. Seek ye the Lord. Isaiah 55 and 6, he read, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Something caught my attention when he gave us this message. The phrase, while he may be found. Suggests that we must take his invitation seriously. For we don't know while we are delaying and responding to this invitation, it may cease. The parable of the Great Supper, according to Luke 16 and 24, God said, for I say unto you that none of those men that were bidden should taste of my supper. God closed the door on those who rejected his invitation. Tonight, I want to make a declaration. It is not an assumption, nor is it something that I have to think twice about. For the 53 years that God has given me on this earth, God has blessed America. There has not been a nation on this earth that have been given the opportunity that we have in experiencing the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we near the coming of our Lord, as we see the things that are happening, the scripture still declares in these things are still happening when our leader gave us the message on last year, the pressers, he says the kingdom will still suffer violence. Still going to be ideologies. Still going to be men pressing into the kingdom. Bringing ideas that did not originate with God. Make no more mistake about it. Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was the architect. He was the one that laid out the building plan. 
But as we see today, as they are pressing in, we are the more pressing in. I believe that as we hold on to God's truth and understand the value of what God has done, it's going to shift some things in respect to those that understand what God has done for them. I know I was a wretch. Going nowhere. In my community, the statistics said that I am going to end up like my environment. But we all know it's up to you. Ezekiel said the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, but the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The opportunity in my environment would have said to me, my marriage won't last. I didn't see marriages lasting in my family or in my community. At best, they said I would be an average Joe. Just getting by in life. But look at your neighbor says, but God. See, sometimes we got to reflect on where we came from. But God did something. He did something. I'll tell you what he did. Y'all ready for it? He saved me. At age nine, with grass stains on my knees from playing outside the whole day, my brother decided to take me to this church. As I sat in the pews, Engaging at age nine on this message, I heard the gospel message. After the preacher called the altar call, I got up out of my seat with no assistance. Mama wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. No one could have reached out and said, come. Something in me at age nine got up. I got in the center aisle, and as I walked on the center aisle up to the altar, I told the altar worker, I want to be saved. When God saved me, my whole life changed. When God saved me, he done something in respect to my environment. I will see things. At age seven, I will go into a school system that was meant for failure. Out of the classmates and the things that I was a part of in the crowd that was in my environment, I should have been making ease, but somehow the Lord protected me. Didn't try the club scene until later, but none of those things as a young boy growing up in church affected me in respect to drawing me out there. All the while I did not see what God was doing but well, God was doing something. God was making a way for me out of no way. Therefore, tonight, I can declare to you, I'm still at age 53, saved. For 
40-something years going through the things in life and seeing what I'm seeing, God kept me. This is what occasioned this letter. Jude had originally planned to write a positive letter celebrating the great truths of the common salvation that he shared with his readers. But alarming news came. The LGBT came in the church. The abortionists stood and said that they were right. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm telling you right now, I, I'm praying that I have the resolve of my leader because I was almost about to lose it. When that young lady got close to my face and 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 and, and, and <laughs> I I almost had a flashback <laughs> because I know. That wouldn't have happened anywhere else. But I'm glad I'm growing. I'm growing. I went to the church and began to pray and ask God, give me the stability and the sustenance to be able to handle that. Because I, I had to be delivered from white folks. I'm not going to lie to you. God, God delivered me. When he delivered me, was a great deliverance. I had a young man that his wife died on the operating table and she had birthed a baby. And I took that father and their two kids into my home. And to this day, uh, those young white babies look at Goldie and I as their grandpa and father. So the Lord for one year taught me to love and to love without partiality. So God deliver me. So Jews said that these individuals had invaded the congregation to which he wrote, threaten the salvation truth. And it compelled him to change his plans because what Peter had prophesied in 2 Peter 2 and 3, Peter says the apostates are coming. But here Jude sees that the apostate were already on the scene. And he began to shift his ladder. He began to denunciate the false teachers and their ungodly lifestyle. And one of his readers, he called them to contend earnestly for the faith. Why did you say this? So that James, you can protect what happened to you at age nine. That it happened for your grandkids when they get old. That it happened for every generation that we protect the common gospel of Jesus Christ. That we understand that we have a duty. We have a duty to keep and Jew and write in this occasion of this letter introduced to the reader. Jew says, I'm a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. Jude introduced himself as a bond servant of Jesus. Jude indicated that in introducing himself as this, shown that he became familiar with the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Christ. Knowing that Jude, who he was, according to John 7 and 5, the Bible declares that Jew, being 
the half-brother of Jesus, when they told Jesus to go to the feast. And the Bible declares that the writer says, after he consulted with them, the writer says, they did not believe either. This same Jew trusted in the Lord, but didn't trust in the Lord to say he was my half-brother, but he trusted in the Lord and says that he was my master. My master, my Lord, and my Savior. Jew went from being an unbeliever to being a slave. No doubt Jude in his experience with God knew to the extent the love of God. Jude says he didn't give me what I deserve. Instead, he gave punishment to his own son on the cross. No doubt Jude picked up Isaiah 53. Surely he had borne our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. I'm not going to tell you to talk to your neighbor, but just, just imagine Jude introducing himself as a slave and says, I chose to be selfless. Gratitude of thanks for what God done for him. He was willingly a slave for Jesus Christ. God didn't have to promise him a new car, a new home. God didn't have to promise him this and that. But what happened was is that he understood that what God did for him in respect to saving him, that was just enough. Contrast the apostate who denied Christ's lordship through their overtly sinful lifestyle. Jude, in his letter, said to them, now that I introduce myself as a slave of Jesus Christ, a brother of James, I, I also was there in Acts 1, 13 and 14, on the day of Pentecost, for the Bible says Jesus was with his brethren, the, the, the brother was with his mother, when the disciples came to Pentecost. So somehow, when the Holy Ghost fell, something got a hold of Jude. So when Jude introduced and identified his readers, the first thing he says to them that are sanctified. Them that are sanctified by God the Father. He says, you have been called. You've been called to set apart. You've been called to be preserved in Jesus Christ. You've been called because God has called the believers to himself. He has set apart and chosen us as his children. In my study, I, I love John MacArthur. And I love, you know, different commentaries, Barnes, and all of them. But, you know, in uh, John MacArthur, they believe in Calvinism. Save, always save. And a certain group of folk would be saved. So when I began to look at what he was saying, I said I could not. Go with that. Because I don't believe that there's a certain group of people that look, don't look like me is the only one that have the ability to be saved. Now, I said, I said, now, Lord, what I'm going to do? So, Elder Wilson, what I did, I went to another live commentary. I went to a commentary, and I, I picked it up after I hit the search button. And it was um, Bishop 
had to their wooden commentary one on one the proper conclusion. If anyone was going to explain to me what Jude was talking about when he used the word called, it was this commentary. And I quote what he says. He says the mystery and understanding the meaning of the word called in Romans 8 and 28. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Those who are called according to his purpose. The word call literally mean not just to those who were summoned. Can't meant those who were summoned. But everybody has been summoned. Everybody has been summoned. How do you know? Because I kept on listening. Whosoever will, let them come. Then he went on to Matthew 19 and says, Go ye out therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go out and reach all the nations. So the Lord is calling everybody. So then who are the called? So the word called there does not mean summons alone. But the word call mean those who were summons, which is everybody. Then it paused and he looked at you. He says, but those who reply and responded favorably to God's call is the one that God called the one that responded with a yes. Then it says you can't take free will out of this. That word called put free will back in it. What are you saying preacher? I'm glad that he said this because too many people forget about the word yes. We sat in church we lose our vigor and our vitality. We lose our fight because we've forgotten that we've been called. You didn't call yourself. God called you. You didn't deliver yourself, but God delivered you. But it is a participation of free will. So I ask you today, how are you responding to God's call? How are you responding to the call of God? I'm telling you right now, as we near the coming of the Lord, God will call in those, but it's up to you whether you reject it or not. But if you reject it, you're going to be out of here. You don't hear me, saints, but it is a powerful thing that God has done because everyone who has accepted it, he predestinated. You see, the predestination is to those who say yes. I'm glad I said yes. I'm glad that God saw me and said, whomsoever will, let him come. Because I said yes all the days of my life. Even the time when I didn't know which way I was going. 
he it predestinated. What did he predestinate in me? He says, I will work in Parker. I will work in your life in such a way that you will be able one day to be conformed to the image of my son. And everybody who he has predestinated has been justified. Everybody that's been justified, you've been glorified. Everybody that he's been glorified, my Lord, he called. So the question is not uh, my God who I've called, but the question is, are you saying yes? After you've been saved a while, are you still telling the Lord? You want to know why? I believe we have to build upon last year's message, pressing on, and then this year's message, seeking the Lord. Because Jew says, I want to address what's going on in the church. My point tonight, during that snow day, I made my way to the church in eight inches of snow. Me and Brother Jamel and Goldie, I got up at five o'clock because I told the saints, I'm going to be there. When I got there, won't want nobody there but me and Goldie and Jamel. I got on my knees and I began to pray. As I was praying, God began to speak to me. And he says, mind of God, tell your people this on this day. He says, tell them you got to make a difference by making a distinction. I've called you out. I've given you something great. I've given you something power. For so Jude said, wow, you are making a difference. You've been transformed into the image of your son. You've been transformed by the image of his son. By not conforming to the world. But being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Proving what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. He told me, why you maintaining it? A difference at the same point you got to make a distinction what do you mean preacher you ain't gonna sit beside me and my God feel that it's comfortable to sit beside me and I not show you I've been born again I wish the church my God to stop talking to your neighbor express to your neighbor who you love express to your neighbor who brought you out? He brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I wish I had a church that would understand that giving up or giving in is not an option. It's not an option. Look at your neighbor and say, there's not an option. Don't look at your neighbor and say to yourself, there's not an option. It's not an option for me. So Jew went on and said, here we are. It's a serious thing to serve the Lord. It's a serious thing to understand the work of God. So Jew, when he got in the church, he saw all these individuals creeping in unaware the question is how did they get in how did they get in the church i believe bishop we got secrets folk in the church that say they belong to the church but sneaking people in knowing that their doctrines knowing what they stand for 
is not what God originated. Bringing folk in, I know it ain't gonna happen here. It ain't gonna happen in building ground of truth, but wherever it is happening, folk of my God, sliding people in, bringing damnable heresies, telling people it's okay, it's fine. Don't talk about that. We got to use tact. We got to be able to love everybody. We can love everybody, but we cannot, my God, tolerate their behavior. I wish I had a church that would understand, as Jew says, wait a minute. I'm being transformed, and I'm getting ready to make a distinction, meaning this. Jesus says, I came not to send peace on the earth, but a sword. I, I came to make some division. I called to cause virus between mother and daughter law, father and son. I came to see who's on the Lord's side. Is there anybody going to sit there and tolerate the behavior that's going on? It's not going to be here. What are you saying, Parker? I was walking through St. Louis, walking down the stretch, minding my own business, having to look up and see these strange people. My God, I heard the voices. I had my head down. I, my God, I looked up. And I saw all these funny folk uh, walking around. Now, I didn't used to call them funny folk. I think I've grown a little bit. But can I go back and say what I really said? I saw all these faggots uh, walking around. And they felt like they were being comfortable. And I said, what in the world? Why in the world would a church uh, allow this to happen? Then the Lord spoke to me. He says, wait a minute. Somebody said, Wednesday night. I was sitting in my seat, minding my own business. I heard a preacher got up and said, be clean. I told my wife, I said, girl, you know I can't stay here too long. I'm going to have to get up and get out of here. I said, you know what I got to do? I got up, went to the front, and heard a word from the Lord. I heard our leader say, say something, say something. Are we going to let the church be overtaken, allowing them to feel comfortable in the church? Say something. Jews said, say something, say something, make a difference by making a distinction. I didn't come to go along and to get along. I went down to my room rejoicing. I said, my man of God said something, and I know that it made him mad. But I had the glad glass because you're not going to come in the house of the Lord and do what you want to do because I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. It's not an option. It's not an option. Let me close. So here, I went all over to Malachi. Try to support what you were saying. Saints don't become weary and well doing. Sometimes it may seem like the things 
in your life is not happening fast enough. But I want to encourage you, stay the fight, stay in the race, don't become negative. I remember at the Philippian breakfast when you invited me to give my little speech, I became a Philippian, a Philippian believer. I became a Philippian giver, not knowing in June I would have to go and get this second surgery. Matter of fact, they rushed me too fast. When I went in, I was making almost $10,000 a month. My income went from $10,000 to $3,000. I couldn't go to work, and my God, but I kept my Philippians offering up. Now, we have crossed over to another year. I still look, my God, like I'm new money, haven't lost a thing. God kept me through it all. Because why? I didn't change my conversation. I didn't change my praise. I remember at Ames when my dad waved at me. I was sitting in my chair, couldn't move but my feet. And my God, he says, be a presser and don't be a fool. I sat there, I had one leg shaking, shouting in my seat because I believe if we stay the course, if we understand what God has done for us, he will give us our heart desires. Now, in Malachi, the Bible says there was a conversation going on. And they said this, you have said it is vain to serve the Lord. What profit is it that we keep his ordinance? What are we getting out of? And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Now we call the proud happy. We call the work of the wickedness are set up and them that tempt God is even delivered. That was one conversation. That was those that sit in the church and said, God, when you're going to bless me, when you're going to come through for me, when you're going to do this for me, walk in the house of the Lord with your head hanging down. Every time you turn around, pastor, pray for me. What's wrong, darling? It's just a hang nail. You've gotten over that before. Pastor, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Looking out in the audience, you about to fall asleep. And my God, give up while all of this powerful preaching is going on, telling you it's up to you. And my God, you complaining about your situation. That was one conversation that was going on. But then, then, that was another conversation going on. They that fear the Lord speak often to one another. And the Lord take this by the goodness of the Lord. May God be good to me. The Lord has me this morning. I'm gonna praise him. I can't wait to get into the house of the Lord. I'm gonna bless the Lord at all times. And this praise should continually be in my mouth. My God, when Rocky. When Rocky start playing on my dance, one conversation that said, I'm going to hearken 
I'm going to say this. And the Bible says the Lord hearkened and heard it. Jamel, mm-hmm. on the 15th of December, you could have sat in the church side because of things that happened to you. Yes, sir. But you decided you were going to praise the Lord. Yes, sir. I wrote it down. God said, I heard you. I heard out of your belly. I heard a praise even when you didn't feel like it. I heard you glorifying God. I heard you telling them thank you. It didn't matter what your circumstances. When you wanted to. You wanted to sit out on God. Something got a hold of you. As you sit there, he put a running in your feet, put a clapping in your hand. Next thing you know, threw your hands up, you jumped up, and you begin to give him praise and glory. And God said, I wrote it down. Here, the writer says that God says, I put it, I wrote it down. And he says, you should be the Lord of hosts, you say, in the day when I make up my Jews, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. Tell your neighbor, It ain't time to give up. It ain't time to throw in. It's time to keep on serving the Lord in my clothes. Jude says, remember what God has spoken to you by the apostles that told you Marcus gonna come. How we gonna shut the mocker's mouth up? We gonna maintain a difference. We gonna make a distinction. We are not gonna give up. But what we gonna do, we gonna find ourselves on a Friday night. Yeah, Lord. Friday night, all night long, praying. Did I say praying? Praying. Praying. Ain't nothing wrong with praying, is it? I know there ain't nothing wrong because we had a prayer time in here on New Year's Eve. I'm in a church with dual citizenship. When I come here, we pray. When I go home, we pray. John realized that prayer, my God, is the key to the kingdom. This is why when our Lord and Savior came to him and Bishop explained on the Isle of Patmos on a rocky ground, laying down, my God, not losing sight on the message that God has given him. So it don't matter where we land as long as We pray in the Holy Ghost, praying by his spirit, building up the most holy faith in you right now. God wants to do something in this place. He wants the world to know that North Carolina Third, Upper Room Church of God in Christ, the pillar ground of truth, have made a declaration. I'm not giving up. Matter of fact, I'm going in even the more. Jude, in the end of the day, he says, now, 
unto him. Now unto him. You ready, John? That's able to keep me. Preserve me until the day of his coming. What are you saying, Parker? My mind is made up and my heart is fixed. I'm going all the way. Now this one time, you can tell your neighbor this. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. It's not an option. 